Hey guys, and welcome back to your video. In this video, I will show you a very sick parallax scroll effect in Jetpack Compose. I'm sure you know this effect. When we scroll, you can see these different layers of our background are moving independently with a different speed. So the moon is, is scrolling a little bit faster than this uh, mid layer of mountains and this front layer here. And this gives us a really cool scroll effect which I personally really like. And I will show you how you can make this in Jetpack Compose, which is actually not too difficult. So I am in an almost empty Compose project here. I only included the resources that we need for these images. I will provide these for you, so you can just use the same images as I use here. If you want to use your own images, then just as a very quick uh, introduction, how you need to provide this image, how you need to create these. Mm. Here I have this outer background, so you can see that is just, just yeah, the the outer area here, these trees and stuff like that. Then we have an image for the mid mountains here, this mid BG file, which looks like this, and we have the moon background, which is well, the moon and the bats and stuff like that. And the, the background here is actually what we will accomplish manually. So if you want to make such an effect, then you just need different layers of backgrounds. And then we will just have different images here laying on top of each other. And each of these images will scroll with a different speed when we actually scroll this list here. Okay, so let's jump into main activity. We'll actually do everything in here. And we will start with a lazy column, because everything is just put into a big list. I want to set the modifier to modifier um, dot filmx width. And that's it for now. We will, we will extend this modifier later. Let's actually first think about which states we need to make this scroll effect. So we essentially need two different states here. On the one hand, we need a scroll offset for our moon. And on the other hand, a scroll offset for this mid background. The outer background, the trees here, the black ones, don't need an extra state because they will always stick to the very bottom here. So they don't move up. And uh, yeah, then we would have some kind of weird space here. That is not what we want. Instead, we only want a pixel offset for this mid background, for this uh, brown one. And we want an offset for the moon. And these offsets should increase or decrease independently from each other. So the moon offset should increase more than the um, mid-level offset here. So let's actually do that. We will have a variable moon offset by remember. That will be a mutable state of initially 0f. So we need to import that here, import get value and mutable state off and import that. And then we can copy this, paste it for the mid BG um, offset, which will also start at zero. Then two more variables that we need here, which are not state, are the different scroll speeds. So we want to define how fast should the moon move and how fast should the mid background move. So we can say val moon scroll speed and I will set this to 0.0f, 0.8f and the mid bg scroll speed will be set to 0.03f. Those are just values I experimented with and I found these to, to fit really well but of course feel free to, to choose your own values. With that you can basically determine how fast the moon moves and how fast the mid background moves. Then what we also want to do, what might not get too clear here, is that when we scroll, we actually decrease the height of the image by a little bit. And that gives us the effect that the move, uh, the, that the moon moves out of the image at some point, only because we actually decrease the height of that. And because we only know um, the, the aspect ratio of that image, we, we kind of need to calculate that height to assign a new height. The aspect ratio for this image here that I chose is uh, 3 to 2. So the um, that means the, the width is 1.5 times as wide as it is high. 
And with that info, we can actually do some calculations here. So we can first of all get the image height, or rather the, the screen width, because with that screen width, we know how wide our image is. And with that, we can calculate the height of our image because we know its aspect ratio. So val image height in the end is local configuration current screen width in dp. And to get the height of our image, we need to multiply that with our aspect ratio, which is 2f divided by 3f. And we want to have that in dp. Then what we also need is a lazy list state, which will help us to determine how we currently scroll and which items are actually visible, because we don't want to have this parallax effect when we're at the very top of our list or when we're at the very bottom, only when we're actually really scrolling. And for that, we use a lazy list state is equal to remember lazy list state. We can then assign that here for our lazy column um, state is lazy list state. Okay, and let's actually first populate our list a little bit with some items. So let's just have 10 sample items here, just texts. Mm, these will be just sample, sample item. And let's give them a modifier, modifier um, dot filmx width. And let's give them a little bit of padding of 16 dp. And yeah, format that a bit. Okay, so we have 10 items on top of our image. Then we can actually copy that to also have some items below our image. Let's make these 20. That can stay the same. And in between of these text items, we want to have our image. So we can use a single item block to just have one item. That will be a box. And that box contains three image composables that will be laid on top of each other. And that will give us that parallax effect if we then apply different offset values for each single image. This box will have a modifier of modifier that clip to bounce so that will make sure that whatever overlaps from our images that we put inside of this box will just be cut off so we don't want that the image actually lays on top of our sample item or so we want that it gets cut off here at this edge and that's what we achieve with clip to bounce then we want to say fill max width and we set the height to our image height that we calculated above and since we don't have any background in our vector drawables, we want to assign that here, which is a gradient. So we can say a vertical gradient, where we can provide a list of colors. And I will actually just paste these over here. Just these two colors. Feel free to write this off here. Just a very bright orange goes over to a little bit lighter orange, and that looks pretty cool. Okay, so what's only missing here are our three images that we put inside of this box. So, first of all, we have image. For the painter, we want to choose a painter resource, which is, oh, let's let's rearrange that a bit. Um, yeah, like this. The first image has our drawable dot moon bg. So the moon is basically what's what's behind everything. So we need to include that first here. Content description, yeah, let's just pick moon. We want to make sure that the content scale, that is important, is set to content scale that fill width. What that will do is, it will just fill the width and adjust the height accordingly so that it matches its aspect ratio. Then we want to set the alignment to alignment bottom center. So what this will do is, for we will use that for all images here, each image so it should just always stick at the very bottom here. So if if not every image here has the exact same size, then this will basically accomplish that, uh, let's say these, these trees would only go until here. Then with this bottom center alignment, we make sure that it really sticks to the bottom of our box here. If we would set this to top center, then the trees would be here. So I hope that somehow makes sense. But for our image, we just want to make sure that it's bottom center. And then for the modifier here of that image, we can choose modifier match 
parent size. I think we could also choose fill max size here. Haven't tried that out, but should also work. We copy this image, paste it two more times for our two other images. This one will be our mid background. Um, the content style and alignment will be the same, the modifier will be the same. And for the last one, we have our outer background, which are the black trees. And that's actually already it for the images. So if we now launch our app, of course we haven't implemented any um, any parallax crawling yet, that comes next. But we should already be able to see how our images display and how it fits in the list. Yeah, there we go. So right now we can scroll here, but as you can see, there is no, no parallax crawl effect. So that is what we will do now. To actually create scroll effects, we need something called a nested scroll connection. That is basically, yeah, it's an interface that gives us functions that we can that we can use to get information about the current scroll strength, we can say. So we just get the information how fast the user just scrolled. And with that value, we can make some calculations to, to determine our offsets, for example. So I will create a val nested scroll connection here that will be object of type nested scroll connection and in here we can press ctrl o to override all of these functions here or just one we actually only need one function which is on pre-scroll so before the the scroll is actually processed this function will be called and delivers us this available offset here let's just implement that this available offset that contains information about how fast we scrolled and we can then decide what to do with that offset. So for example, we can get the scroll delta, so by how many pixels we actually scrolled, by using available.y. And here you can see we actually also need to return an offset again. What we return here determines how much we actually scroll compared to how much we moved our finger. So if we would say we return offset um, let's say 0f and delta divided by 2, what this would do is that the list would actually only scroll half as much as we moved our finger. So with this on pre-scroll function we can kind of determine how much we really scroll in the end or not. We don't really care about that. We all, always want to scroll exactly the amount we, we moved our mouse or finger. So what we can do is we can just return offset at zero. So we, we leave that unchanged. We're only interested in the scroll delta because with that we can calculate our, our offsets here accordingly. And that is what we will do in between here. So what I will do is I will say moon offset. Um, and we actually need to move that below our offsets. Well, let's move the offsets above it. Like this. Then in here we can say moon offset plus equals delta multiplied by moon scroll speed. So we just add our new delta multiplied with our scroll speed on top of our moon offset. We will do the same for our mid bg offset and replace this with mid bg scroll speed. So we just take our delta, how much we scrolled, multiply it with the corresponding speed and add it on top of our offset. It's very simple. Then we can take this nested scroll connection and apply it to our lazy column that can just be applied in a modifier. Nested scroll, and here we pass our nested scroll connection. Now, how do we make sure that we also apply these two offsets to our images that these actually move to the top or to the bottom? We want to go to our images um, and we want to apply that for our moon background and our mid background. So in the modifier, we say graphics layer. That's basically a modifier that allows us to just transform the, the content of this image without affecting any other composables. So that's a really efficient way if you really want to only change like the position of this image, the scale, the rotation or so. So in here, we want to change the translation. So the movement of that image, translation in y direction, we want to move it up. And we want to set it to our um, moon offset here. And that will just make sure that we move up this image by our moon offset. 
We then want to copy the graphics layer, paste it to our mid BG image, and we want to move that up with our mid BG offset. And let's now launch our app and see how that now looks like. Little spoiler, it's not done yet. <laughs> we still have to do a little bit of stuff here. There we go. Let's scroll. And you can already see the moon is scrolling faster than our mid background. It's also scrolling down. But one issue is that right now if we're at the top and scroll down, you can see the moon is still scrolling. Because it still calls our own pre-scroll function. And yeah, it, it really doesn't care if we really scroll in the end or not. In either way, we process these values. And we also would like to make our image, we would like to decrease the height a little bit when we scroll. That's also something we don't consider yet. That can actually be done quite easily by going to our height modifier here. And here we just add our mid VG offset on top of that. You need to consider that this offset is usually um, negative. So we'd rather subtract a value here from the height. So we make it smaller. That is actually a pix uh, it's a pixel value and it wants a DP value. And there is no default function to convert something to DP, I think. So what I will do is I will just quickly create my own extension function for that. Um, usually I would create an extra file for that. But for the sake of this simple tutorial, I will just do that here in main activity, private function float.2dp will return a dp value and we can say we return this so the float value divided by resources get system display metrics and density dot dp that is how we actually convert pixels to dp we just divide it by our density then we can make use of that function um, yeah we already do that here so we say plus that 2dp and now I don't know if we see this if it's a really big difference if we relaunch this then we should see that it that the height decreases a little bit so here yeah a little bit if you look really closely however one last thing is missing and that is that we prevent that we can scroll when we're at the very top or at the very bottom because that leads to very weird effects so if we scroll up here then you will see yeah uh, that that doesn't look like we wanted so what we want to do is before we add this stuff on the offsets we want to make sure is the first item visible or is the last item visible and in in both of these cases we just want to return offset zero and make sure we don't do anything with these offsets and for that we need our lazy list state so val a layout info it's actually called and we get that from our lazy list state dot layout info to check if we're at the very top of our list is very easy we can just use lazy list state first visible item index and if that's zero so if the item with index zero is visible then we just want to return offset dot zero so here let's let's write a comment check if the first item is visible and then now we want to check the last item sadly there is no last item index that's visible so we need to use that layout info if layout info dot visible items info that gives us a list of all visible items and the information about that we want to call last or null so we we try to find the last visible item and now we want to make sure that the index of that last visible item is actually the last index of our list. So if that's not null, we call index. And if that is equal to layout info dot total items count minus one. That is how we can essentially check that. In that case, we also just want to return offset zero. Let's now launch this again. Now that should actually be everything we need to do here. there we go so we have that parallax scroll effect here and if we are at the very top and we scroll nothing happens if we're at the very bottom and we scroll up then also nothing happens so now we have that very cool scroll effect you can play around with these values here of course with the speeds and that's pretty much it yeah
th those are the only two values you can play around with here. But I hope you really like this video and you, you have another cool idea for your project, how you can pimp that up with a cool scroll effect. And if you say, hey Philip, I really like your videos, then you will also love my free email newsletter, which you can subscribe to down below. There is a link for that. And yeah, you will basically get regular Kotlin, Android, Jetpack Compose, architectural advice, all that important stuff here around Android, right into your inbox, all for free. You don't need to pay anything for that. So definitely do check it out and subscribe to that. Apart from that, I wish you a really good day and see you in the next video again. Bye bye.